Parsis have been living in Mumbai for hundreds of years now. They live in walled housing colonies like these and are known to be the most urbanized and literate community in India. Parsis follow Zoroastrianism. They are forbidden from marrying non-Parsis. Those who do so are shut out of the community. At a fire temple in India, non-Parsis are forbidden from entering. Our religion does not permit proselytization. That means we do not allow anybody outsider. We do not take them inside. Neither do we allow anybody, any male or female, who, who marries outside the community. Parsis in India do not allow conversion to their religion. The Parsi panchayat is not open to children of Parsi women entering the community if the father is non-Parsi. Roshni D'Souza married a Christian in 1999. She is a Parsi woman, but the Bombay Parsi Panchayat believes her children cannot be introduced into the community. Her children were banned from performing the Navjot ceremony. The Navjot is a ritual through which a child is introduced into the Zoroastrian religion. Religion is a very personal issue. Parsi Panchayat or XYZ cannot affect it. Its religion is a very personal issue and we had decided on the Navjot to have it done. And that was the thing we wanted to have it done by hook or by crook, come what may. So what did they try to do? They tried to scare my guests who were going to attend the function by giving in the media that they would be standing outside with black flags. We received threatening calls that uh, they would come to my house and tear the sadra and custody of my children once they were wearing it. They would harm the family. There are only about 100,000 Parsis worldwide. They are at the heart of various businesses and innovations that have shaped this country. They have even played a fundamental role in India's freedom struggle up to 1947. Khushru Madan was a Parsi priest who agreed to conduct the initiation ceremony of Roshni's children. He has had to undergo a lot of criticism, but feels he is trying to do his part in helping the community grow. Well, it is not mentioned in any of our scriptures that uh, non passes cannot follow Zoroastrian religion. There are a lot of non passes uh, Zoroastrians all over the world. Unfortunately, our today's so-called orthodox Parsis, no, they think that a Parsi is a Zoroastrian and a Zoroastrian is a Parsi, which is wrong. Uh, Zoroastrian can be a non-Parsi also. Hardly any Parsis left to go to fire temples. Now, in Bombay itself, there are about 45 fire temples. Out of that, only 8 or 10 are working well. The rest are on the verge of close down. There are hardly 2-3 Parsis going in a day. And uh, it is very costly to maintain a fire temple. because. Mehar Mercy is the president of the Association of Intermarried Zoroastrians. Her team works towards protecting the rights and privileges of Parsis married outside their religion. Uh, Fifteen years ago or so, or when we, before we started the association, they had deliberated on this fact uh, and they found that they could not uh, excommunicate Parsi ladies married to non-Parsis who had married under the Special Marriages Act. And Suddenly now, after 15, 16 years, they've suddenly decided that, oh, no, they, are, they have to be excommunicated. If you marry outside the community, you cannot use any of the privileges or rights of the Parsi, which is absolute nonsense. And we're not going to take it lying down. We're going to fight this. Jahangir Patel feels there are numerous other reasons why the community continues to decline in population. He is the editor of a community magazine, Parsiana and has been observing trends in the Parsi community since the last 35 years. There is a tremendous gap between the births and deaths. And basically, we're an aging community. The number of people in the reproductive age is very small. So unless everybody were to get married at a young age and have five or six children, you couldn't stem the decline. And that's not going to happen. Nobody's going to get have five and six children in Bombay today. So it's not a factor of money. It's a factor of attitude, outlook. Um, women working, not want to be at home, looking after the child. So all in all, the decline is going to continue. It's going to get worse. Uh, it may stabilize at a population of about 25,000 for some time, and then again it will continue to decline. But I don't think you can reverse this decline. The Indian government, as part of their campaign to support Parsis, has pledged more than $200,000 to help them reverse the decline in population. A low birth rate, late marriages and small families seem to be the most significant reasons for the decline of the Parsi community in India. Amrit Rambu, Press TV, Mumbai.